As a culture, we value freedom above all else. And a byproduct of a system that is organized around freedom is that you sort of ignore disciplinary boundaries and you work on whatever you want to work on with whoever you want to work on. Um, so, you know, so, you know, for example, like our aggregate confusion project, um, which is trying to, you know, improve ESG measurement is a mix of computer scientists, statisticians, economists, um, and sustainability people. Um, so we're certainly living the multidisciplinary thing uh, every day. Um, if I think about like what um, is emerging out of that that's special, um, you know, um, we are, you know, um, the noise, like, I mean, this, it gets very, this gets a little wonky and technical, but um, there's a, uh, it turns out that like, you know, there's all this debate about like how much signal is there for investors in ESG information? Like, can you outperform the market by uh, using ESG data and um, studies in all kinds of different directions. But um, nobody had really looked at like the way at these data, the way an engineer would look at it, which is um, how noisy are these data and can we increase the signal to noise ratio, um, which is like, a, it's the kind of thing that I think Roberto Rigobon coming from an engineering background kind of uniquely notices um, and he's a macroeconomist and econometrician, but he like, you know, has those origins and he interacts with a lot of, of folks from that background. And so he was able to, you know, he and Florian Berg and the team were able to use this instrumental variable regression technique to denoise ESG data. Um, and then it turned out that there was a much bigger signal there to, um, predict returns than there was if you were just looking at one ESG provider and not doing this kind of noise reduction technique. So, um, so that's an example of like one academic paper, and 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 now we're we're working on in taking that technique and actually putting it into practice with investors who might be able to use it to improve their performance. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's a very very a very very small example, but one that's close to home and immediately appears. And then the other one is that, um, you know, we, um, our, uh, we have this interactive climate simulation tool called En-ROADS, um, which allows people to explore climate futures. And we use it, we, we use it in conversations with senators and uh, Congress people and Biden cabinet. And then, you know, I use it with um, family offices and institutional investors to help them identify what are high leverage actions in climate versus low leverage actions. How do they interact with each other to produce better scenarios? How can we think about transition risks under different scenarios? All the things that we have to figure out. And, you know, putting something like that together requires that you, you know, there's a system dynamics method to that underlying modeling. And then there's all of the economic uh, studies, the, the um, climate science, the um, you know, innovation studies about the learning curves of these different technologies. I mean, there's so many different disciplines whose research produces the parameters that are part of pull, coming together into that system dynamics model that is that we can now use to um, engage with people in a very conversational way to upgrade the quality of conversation about climate informed by social scientists about, about, uh, about, uh, climate communication. So that's, I would say that's another project where like it just, nothing of that would exist if you weren't really crossing a lot of disciplinary boundaries.